Hello everybody and today we've got something rather special. We're going to be having a look at some borosilicate glass. So I guess the first question to answer is why glass? What makes glass special? The main thing is that it's just so clear. Like, it looks absolutely fantastic. It's really shiny. The coolant comes out really, really strongly and it doesn't react with anything. You can put pretty much anything into glass tubes and you're gonna be fine. Of course, the main problem with glass is simply working with it. It's very difficult to cut. It's even harder to bend and trying to get your accurate loop done is really quite difficult. So today we're gonna to be looking at how to do that. We're gonna be exploring the methods, uh, some of the do's, some of the don'ts, and hopefully we can get some glass into your system in the future. So like with other tubing varieties, glass comes in a number of sizes. So the typical ones are going to be 16 millimeters and 12 millimeters, or the 13 millimeters also available. We've got some samples of that here. It also comes in straight sections and also in bent sections. So you can have 90 degrees or say 135 degrees. So what tools are we going to be needing to be able to cut our glass? Right, well, for a start, we're gonna need either a diamond cutting wheel for a Dremel or a multi-tool, or one of these, which is a glass tube cutter. It has like a little wheel in it, and then you compress it around the outside of the glass and chip it away. We're also gonna need some tools for finishing the glass so that it doesn't destroy our fittings. We've got some sandpaper, and we've also got a blowtorch, which we're gonna be using for flame polishing. So we're going to begin by using the tubing cutter. First, mark where you're gonna cut on your tube. I'm using a Sharpie. Next, you put the tube into the cutter, line it up with the little wheel, and then you press and rotate. With the tube nicely scored, you then move your thumbs in behind, and push. And if you're lucky, you can score a double kill. Now, the other common method to cut the tube is to use a rotary tool such as a Dremel, with a diamond cutting wheel. Now the advantage of this is that you can be more, more precise. The problem with the snapping method is that you can only snap in the middle of a tube. If you try snapping the end, it's just gonna shatter, it won't work, you can't get a grip. So you can actually edit your tube a little bit more easily with a diamond cutter wheel. A big point with the Dremel is you have to think about the safety because a huge amount of dust will come out. I mean, it's there's loads and loads and loads of dust and you don't want that in your lungs, you don't want that in your eyes, so wear goggles, wear a mask, else you're gonna get pneumonotramicus of silicobacinoconiosis, also known as silicosis. We've got our cut tubes now, I think it's about time we sanded these edges. We're gonna begin by doing a wet sand using some 180 grit paper. This will get the edges nice and flat and we can get a little bit of a chamfer around the outside. This is really, really important because we're going to be putting them into the O-rings in the fittings and you don't want to break them because the edges are really sharp. Everyone knows you get cut on glass. Well, it's the same for the O-ring. You want it to be as intact as possible. You don't want any scratches. You don't want dings and nicks. So pay attention to this step. It's really, really important. Now these edges are pretty good, but I think we can do better with a little bit of help from fire. We're now going to flame polish the ends of the tube. This will give it really, really smooth finish and be perfect for the fittings. But because we're working with a blowtorch and it's gonna get very, very hot, I would suggest using either some gloves that are heat resistant, or you can use maybe some pliers uh, to hold the tube better. But this bit, you're gonna to want to put the end of the tube by the end of the cone. It's the hottest part of the flame. If you've sanded the end of the tube properly, it should only take a couple minutes to heat it up. If, however, you were lazy about it and you didn't sand it, then you're gonna to have to wait maybe 10, 15 minutes for the tube to heat up and melt properly. And that's all there really is to it. Don't be tempted to try and cool down the ends of the tube faster by maybe dipping it into water or leaving it in a cold place because the glass will shatter. It doesn't really like that. So just let it cool down naturally and be careful. It is very, 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 very hot. It will melt through lots and lots of items of clothing and you don't want that on your skin. Thanks for watching, and I hope this inspires you to put some glass into your water loop soon.